What movie was basically just an ad? A few people here have already said Transformers, but Transformers, the movie, 1986, was basically just an ad for the toys. There is also a rumor that they put in a single shit in the dialogue so it would earn a PG rating, so that kids would have to go with a parent, and the parent would have to sit through the commercial, so as to understand what particular toy the kids were screaming for this time. Wasn't the original cartoon just an ad for the toys as well? Like with He-Man. Talladega Nights was the movie that managed to have the hugest amount of ad placement I've ever seen without breaking my immersion because NASCAR is already covered head to toe in corporate sponsorships so it wasn't out of place. Also the part where he's contractually obligated to advertise Powerade every time he says grace just demonstrated they had a level of self-awareness about the kind of ad placement they were doing and it worked really well. Looks like Ricky Bobby made the unusual choice to sell advertising space on his windshield. This sticker is dangerous and inconvenient, but I do love Fig Newtons. There are a couple Netflix Christmas movies that are just ads for K-Jewelers. I watched some movie on Netflix about magical Christmas decorations and kept thinking wow, this prop maker did a really shitty job. When I read the reviews on IMDb I found out that it was a Hallmark movie and they actually do sell those ornaments, not American, had no idea, the whole movie was basically an ad for their shitty product. I used to work retail at a place that sold the official Hallmark ornaments, and let me tell you, they're not only expensive, something like $14, $20 and up for the year's limited edition ones, but middle-aged women went absolutely mental for them. There were times where I'd wonder if a fight was about to break out. I feel like they used to be really nice at least, like glass and pretty. My friend recently sent me a link of a bad and I thought it looked cool so she bought it for me. $25, $25, cheap plastic and glitter, it feels like a child's toy. The internship was basically just a recruitment video for Google. Such a Silicon Valley circle jerk. Middle out? The Lego movie, ironically. They went full circle on Black Friday, when they aired an ad on YouTube that was the entirety of the Lego movie. That's pretty funny. Most people probably skipped past without a second thought. I actually went to Lego's channel to watch it. Time well spent. I watched it via the link on Reddit. Enjoyed way more than I expected. Agreed, time well spent. Top Gun. I love it, but Top Gun. Navy enrollments went way up afterwards. 1989's The Wizard, which starred Fred Savage, Jenny Lewis, Christian Slater, and was Tobey Maguire's first movie. It's about a kid who runs away cross-country to enter a video game tournament, which wasn't really a thing back then. The whole point of the tournament is that they're the first to play Super Mario Bros. 3. The entire climax of the movie is Fred Savage playing a Nintendo game. It's a giant commercial. The best part is that he wins by using a tip he got from one of those $1.99 minute video game tip hotlines. Edit, okay, I was completely off about the tip line thing, and there were some video game tournaments at the time, but nothing at all like there are today. Also, Fred Savage was the older brother of the main character, I was picturing Princess Bride era Fred Savage. In World War Z when he finds a way to defeat the zombies and then drinks a Pepsi with the logo right in your face I felt the whole thing was just a build up to that Pepsi moment. And recruitment ad for us army as well. From the Transformers movie, I learned that the U.S. Army functions through an elaborate series of square-shouldered macho standoffs. Food Fight, an animated atrocity staring Charlie Sheen, Hilary Duff and Wayne Brady. It looks impassable for 2000, yet came out in 2012. Almost every scene contains a character which is a mascot for a popular brand of food or supply that can be found at your local supermarket. Mr. Clean just walks through a scene before you even meet the main character. It's streaming on Amazon Prime at the moment. It's worse than a 5th grader's computer animation assignment. A summary of the movie. Which is super sad considering millions of dollars was spent on it. Literally. Millions. There's a pretty popular theory that the whole thing was a money laundering scheme. Which TBH is somehow the most logical explanation. Pitch Perfect 3 just seemed like a way to hype DJ Khaled. Jurassic World. There is literally a line where Chris Pratt says want to see something cool and the camera cuts straight to a Mercedes-Benz logo and the car racing through the forest. 
I thought the meta product placement for Verizon was at least clever, if a bit fourth wall breaking. Worst product placement for a car and anything has to be in fringe. I forget the exact episode but after shots of the logo and car from all angles, the two main characters demonstrate the functionality of its dash before discussing the impressive range of it. It was easily the least realistic thing in five seasons of that show. Fox did that with Bones too, suddenly they start having scenes of the main characters driving Toyotas and lauding all the cool features. The Italian job, made me want a mini, and then I found out how unreliable they are. Me too, as in wanting a mini, then it made me want Charlie's Theron. I failed at both. Edit, geez I didn't expect to get this high, thanks for the silver as well. Also, I did not end up with a mini. That dream was short-lived. To this day the most memorable scene from I, Robot to me was the scene where Will Smith got a pair of Converse sneakers and said that they are vintage 2004, I saw the movie in theaters in 2004. It's funny that's the only scene you remember since the rest of the movie was basically an ad for Audi. Little Nicky, Popeye's chicken is the shiznit this is one of many ads throughout the movie. Castaway, brought to you by FedEx, and Wilson. According to the Wikipedia article, FedEx didn't pay any money for product placement, but provided access to their facilities as well as airplanes, trucks, uniforms, and logistical support while a team of FedEx marketers oversaw production. Thought that was interesting. It makes sense that they wouldn't pay. They probably had a script that called for a major delivery company, shopped it around, and sold it as free advertising. Especially if the marketing department was making sure the company never looked bad, it would be a win-win for them. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The whole movie was just an ad for chocolate bars that were being put out by Quaker Oats. The only problem was the chocolate bars melted at room temperature and were pulled. I'm pretty sure Quaker Oats financed the film as well. Wow, I had no idea about that but it's true. The idea for adapting the book into a film came about when director Mel Stewart's 10-year-old daughter read the book and asked her father to make a film out of it, with Uncle Dave, producer David L. Wolper, producing it. Stewart showed the book to Wolper, who happened to be in the midst of talks with the Quaker Oats Company regarding a vehicle to introduce a new candy bar from its Chicago-based Breaker Confection subsidiary, since renamed the Willy Wonka Candy Company and sold to Nestle. Wolper persuaded the company, which had no previous experience in the film industry, to buy the rights to the book and finance the picture for the purpose of promoting a new Quaker Oats Wonka bar. You should post on Rural for the Karma. Talladega Nights. Am all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Wonder Bread. Big Red. I'm surprised they got so many companies to be in on the joke. It's a hard sell to say that your product placement is going to be if you don't chew Big Red, then duck you. And part of a movie that takes a jab at corporate sponsorship. They didn't, they just did all that product placement for free. It's actually the only way since they go out of their way to mock corporate sponsors in racing. While that's true, I have much respect for companies that give comedians free reign to promote a product however they see fit. Look what Tim Heidecker, Eric Wareheim and Zach Galifianakis did with Absolute Vodka. I'm not a fan of Absolute as a drink, but goddamn it was ballsy to let those guys run wild with their product. The Hunger Games, Mockingjay, Part 1 was a long and drawn-out advertisement for Mockingjay Part 2. To this day, I am mad I paid to watch it in theaters. The book is only 300 pages so Therese no way to stretch it out. It works better as a book because Katniss is meant to be a chess piece so she doesn't do anything that doesn't evolve being a figurehead. My favorite part of Mockingjay was how it proved the central thesis of the series by being dull. Everyone agrees it's the worst book of the three. Why? Because there's no action. There's no danger. In this series that critiques modern culture for being reliant on violence as entertainment, people want more violence. Just perfect.